What's up, people? Fishing football. Welcome to part two of what Billy Napier is doing for Florida. Um, if you like the video, man, subscribe. Give me a like. I uh, appreciate y'all. Going to talk about a few things. Nothing's really went crazy. Um, still don't know about the offensive coordinator position. So kind of, stuff is kind of leveled off as far as recruiting and the coaching hires, for, uh, you know, just for the time being. Uh, but we, knew, we do know we're going to have two offensive line coaches. We're going to have Darnell Stapleton. He won the Super Bowl. He played with the St uh, Steelers when they won the Super Bowl. Funny enough, he actually went and coached uh, New York Sharks um, Women's Football League. thought that was kind of funny. Um, and then we're going after Rob Say. I don't know if it's legitimate yet or, or if it's complete, but we're going after him, New York Giants co-offensive uh, co line uh, coach. Um, two good gets. Now, the whole idea that Billy Napier is going for here, he's, he's trying to have a more younger, hip guy. Uh, to do the uh, elite, uh, the recruiting to get the elite players on the offensive line, and then we're going to have uh, you know an older guy, a more wise guy, uh, to, to to get in the t the trenches and teach technique, you know details, all that kind of stuff. Not a bad idea to me at all. Um, honestly, sounds great. Um, can't argue with it at all because it's really hard to find a guy that can uh, recruit at an elite level and can. Um, develop at an elite level, and that brings me into Corey Raymond. Corey Raymond was at LSU for over ten years. He's got a long pedigree list of players that he's developed and recruited at an elite level. Uh, he's, he's probably one of the best in the business to do it. Um, amazing hire there. I mean, this guy, you know, Derek Stingley, Eli Ricks, Jamal Adams, the list goes on. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's tons. Uh, so uh, amazing hire there. N n you know, nothing to complain about. Um, so let's talk about the recruiting, though. Um, we're not really going after a quarterback this year. As far as I know, um, and it, it's going to kind of bother me if we don't, um, just because we're going to be left with Jalen Kitten, a three-star, um, Carlos Del Rio, three-star, both have never took a snap, Anthony Richardson, four-star, Emory Jones, four-star. I, I happen to think Emory Jones is going to transfer at the end of this year. Um, it's clear to everybody, their mom, their cousin, their friend, their uncle, that everybody wants Anthony Richardson to start, and he's probably going to be the starter taking over the reins. Anthony Richardson has got to stay healthy. He's got to stay healthy. I'm glad they're doing this surgery early, um, you know, before the bowl game and everything. Get him good for the off season, so he has a good off season. He's healthy, and and it, because he just keeps tweaking it, and it just keeps coming back and coming back. So this had to be done. Um, so I'm glad they're doing that, and hopefully he'll be healthy for next year. Um, but like I said, you got to have you know the backups. You know, haven't took a, a college snap yet. So that kind of worries me just a little bit. I wish we would go after somebody. Um, but I, but I understand where he's coming from. Now, what else he's doing as far as the recruiting class goes is he's pretty much building a, 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 an infrastructure. Um, he's not, he's, you know, as you can see, all the wide receivers that we lost that decommitted, the four stars. It seems he's not going after the, di the dynamic playmakers. That kind of bothers me a little bit, but I understand what he's doing. Um, he, he's recruiting offensive tackles, inside linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end. Um, he's really building it at the trenches, and then I, what I'm hoping for is in you know next year or in years to come that he goes after the playmakers so that we can have a, an explosive offense. And I just think that's what he's doing. Um, he just wants to build first. It's it's better for the long term of the program, I guess. He's kind of doing it the right way. He's going about it that way, you know. So that's kind of what we're getting there. Um, you know, we got Diabate, Chris Bogle, Jacob Copeland in the transfer portal. I hope we don't lose any of them. Um, we, we probably are. It just is what it is, like I said. And I think what Napier did um, was all the commits that were committed to the class, I, I think he I – don't, I don't, I don't want to make a bold assumption here, but I think he snatched their offers uh, until he talked to them, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, the reason I think this is because Julian Humphrey was re-offered today by Billy Napier and – you know, as we know, he just committed to Georgia a few days ago, and he's still signing tomorrow. Uh, he's and he's going to sign to Georgia. Um, now, I don't know why you would snatch an offer from Julian Humphrey. You know, one of the most elite uh, safeties in the country right now. But that's just what Billy Napier's doing. He's he's trying to build a clean slate, and I understand. I get it. Um, but that just that's what leads me to think he did that, and that's just some information I kind of gathered just looking at everything. But. Uh, I hope y'all liked the video, man. I'll be back as soon as I hear more news. Um, I watch everything. I stay close to the program as far as I can, you know, as close as I can do it. So I'll give you everything I can, and we'll have part three coming soon, man. Uh, appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all later.